So Fiona is going to share with you the five and a half secrets, five and a half secrets for overcome, overcoming procrastination. So Fiona, the stage is yours. So please take that. sharing with you the Self Growth Project as it's so new and um, the first, as Perry just said, the very first project that we're working on is overcoming procrastination. So how many of you have a little bit of procrastination in your life by a show of hands? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very honest audience, that's fantastic. And I'm sure that you probably most of you actually know other people who have procrastination in their lives as well. But the fact that you're in this room tells me that you're really smart people. Because you're here to get tools to actually push through things that are holding you back from finding your dreams. Aren't you? Yes. Yes, yes I knew you were. So fantastic. I'm going to share with you my five and a half secrets to overcoming procrastination. And secret number one is to think it. To what please? Think it. it. Thank you. To think about it. Not only what it is you want to do, but actually why. Why it is you want to do it. Because the bigger your why is, the more likely you are to actually achieve it. But I'd also like to think, I'd also like to get you to think about what is it that's holding you back? What's that thing that won't budge, that actually slows you down on your progress to achieving your goal? What is that thing costing you? So maybe, maybe it's that when you get home from work, you sit down and watch TV and then channel hop and channel hop and channel hop and channel hop until it's time to go to bed. And actually you've done nothing with your whole of your evening. Or perhaps you're one of these people who sits on Facebook <coughs> for too long. How many of you guys show hands sits on Facebook for too long? Yeah, I guess we're all going to kill you that one. But my, my first new one is when I'm really busy doing something, my mind walks off into the kitchen. Because I love food. I'm in the fridge, and out comes the cheese. I love cheese. Cheese, and then you need a biscuit with cheese, don't you? You need a biscuit. Or maybe another biscuit. And then another biscuit. I don't know. A bit more cheese. Fantastic. Oh, what else is in the fridge? <coughs> Before I know where I am, I've lost half an hour, and I've eaten half a day's worth of calories, which frankly, I don't need. <laughs> Secret number one is to think it. To what, please? Think, think it. it. So can you all put your fingers to your head and say, think it. Think, think it. it. Thank you. Secret number two is to ink it. To what, please? Ink, ink it. it. Because when you write it down, you paint a better picture of what it is that you want to achieve. You set your goal that is clearer, hopefully, and more time, me more measured, measurable, and and time bound, so you're much more likely to achieve it. But also when you're writing it down, you're setting yourself a commitment. A what please? Commitment. A commitment with yourself. And if you share it with other people, then you'll also, you'll also have that accountability with more people to actually achieve what it is you want to achieve. But I'd also I'd like to ask you to write down all those tasks that you want to do in a day. The tasks where you're, where you're Head, the things you want to do during the day that will head, take you to where you want to go. When you've written your list, you might well find that it's a rather long list. And actually, some of those things could well be the things, you know those little habits we were talking about just now? Maybe, I don't know, who's, who's manic about cleaning the bathroom here? No one? Great, you're on my, you're on my Oh, we, we, we have one lady who's manic about cleaning the bathroom. So... <laughs> So how many of you have a to-do list by show of hands? Yeah, and how many of them are as long as your arm? And frankly, rather overwhelming. Yeah, mine too. So when you've written it down, you want to turn that to-do list into a can-do list. So step number two is to ink it. So what, please? Ink, ink it. it. Thank you. And step number three is to plan it. So what, please? Plan, plan it. it. Yeah, because plan it. Proper prior planning promotes peak performance. Promotes what? Peak, peak performance. performance. Thank you. When we plan things, it's that very first step of action. When we're planning it, we know where we're heading, how we're going to do it. 
So, did you know that actually, for every one minute you spend in planning, you're going to save yourself five or possibly ten minutes in execution? And according to Pareto's theory, 80% of your results actually come from 20% of your actions. So that big long list, 80% of those actions on that list that you want to do in a day have got nothing to do with achieving your goal. So what we want to do really is to take that list and make it much shorter. Turn it into that can-do list. And I suggest you do this by using the A, B, C, D and E method. A is for those things that you really must do, those things that are very important and are going to take you towards your goal. B is for those things that, yeah, they're important, but if you didn't do them today, maybe it wouldn't inconvenience anyone too much. C is for those things, well, you know, you really want to do, you know, call a friend, or maybe go to a movie. Cheese. Or eat cheese, maybe, yes. <laughs> D, those things you can delegate. Hey, give them someone else to do. I'm sure you can do it faster, can't you? And E, of those things would frankly eliminate. You don't need them. Throw them away. Make that list shorter. That's the way we go. So, step number three was to plan it. What was it, please? Plan it. Thank you. And step number four is to execute it. What was it, please? Execute it. Thank you. So, you want to pick the most important thing on your list. Letter A. One most important thing, and really focus on it. Really focus on it and, and complete it until you actually actually completed it. Follow it through. But don't attempt to do it all at once because it's probably too big and that will be rather overwhelming. So take, the, take that, one, that one thing and slice it up a bit. Slice it and dice it so that you can take it in smaller sections. Each section, give it a time box, maybe 20 minutes to start, and then achieve it by, the, by your 20 minutes. Take five minutes off. Take the next piece, give that a time box, and make sure that you focus on nothing else, no distractions, until it's finished. And then the next, and so on. So you're doing it step by step by step, and you're actually creating momentum as you go, which means that you're much more likely to achieve your end goal. So step number four is to execute it. What is it please? Execute it. Thank you. And step number five is to review it. What is it please? Review it. Thank you. Now I know some of you might be thinking, hey, I've thought about it, I've written it down, i planned it, I executed it, hell, I've done it. Do I really need to review it? Well, the answer ladies and gentlemen is yes. Of course you need to review it, because when you review things, you can see what worked fabulously. And you can use those tools over and over and over again. But you can also look for those things that, hey, didn't go quite so well. And you can change those for the future. Put in place your new strategy of the things that you know work. So those, ladies and gentlemen, are my five secrets to overcoming procrastination. Thank you to celebrate with me by giving yourselves a great big round of applause.